So my friend Peggy has an audio CD in standard music uh, audio CD format that she herself has produced, and she wants to take one of the cuts off of that CD and convert it into an MP3 file that she can then email to some friends. And since she's a Mac user, I'm going to go ahead and outline a very simple process for doing this using software that comes freely installed on her Mac using iTunes to handle the, the audio conversion into an MP3 file. Very simple to do. But I also want to note that this is not a process that I condone using for uh, commercial CDs, as doing so uh, may constitute the distribution of pirated content. Uh, But as I noted earlier, this was music that she herself has produced. And so I'm going to show her how to do this using iTunes. So um, what I've got here, I'm going to go ahead and take this CD and install it right into the drive here. And when I do that, it's going to get recognized by the iTunes interface. And um, it may also show up um, as, an, as a disk icon on the, uh, on the desktop, uh, which we can go ahead and just uh, leave alone. We don't need to get into that. Just handling it through iTunes at the moment. And since this is not a commercial CD, it may not be registered in the CDDB, the, uh, the online database that iTunes uses to recognize commercial content and automatically allocate track names and so forth. And that's okay. We can go ahead and take care of that ourselves. Uh, But what we're going to do is we're going to be greeted by uh, iTunes with this prompt window that asks us if we want to go ahead and import the CD into iTunes. And uh, and I can go ahead and hit yes, and it automatically begins to import that content. But I want to do a little little bit of house cleaning first. So I'm going to go ahead and click no. And you'll see that the disk shows up here under devices. In this case, as a standard audio CD. And... um, and then the tracks are noted here as they are on the disc. Track 1, track 2, track 3, track 4. And I can go ahead and change those first even before I do the importing. I can go ahead and change the, the title of the CD itself, calling it the... Um, let's call this, this particular case for demonstration purposes, Test CD. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the name of um, these tracks. And in this particular case, I'm going to call it Test Track 01. Now, for this particular demonstration, we only want to import just one particular track. So I don't even need to import the rest. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck those and just import the first track. But before I do, I want to check my settings. And down here on Import Settings, iTunes, by default, is going to have an import setting using the AAC encoder at iTunes Plus settings. And that's really great. It's a really good uh, audio encoder format to optimize uh, the um, the disk space used for the file, as well as giving you really good audio sound. But in this particular case, Peggy wants an MP3 file that will make it a smaller file and, and um, easy to be used by anyone. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and change that setting to the MP3 encoder, and I can then have three options for good, higher, higher quality files. I'm going to go ahead and use high quality, or I'm sorry, higher quality. Click OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and import that track. And... Because I've deselected the tracks I'm not going to import, the import process is only going to take in just the one that I have checkmarked for importing. Now that the import has been completed, I can then go ahead and eject that CD. And then I can search for where it would be located in my iTunes interface in the library. Um, In this particular case, we called it Test Track 01. And there it is, noted right there in the iTunes library. And what we see right there is, in fact, the imported file that we have set up as an MP3 file based on the settings that we designated for the import. So now I can simply take this track and drag it. Just click on it once and then drag it right out of iTunes onto the desktop. And it duplicates onto the desktop a new file that it's exactly what we have imported into the iTunes interface. And it's this file that we've dragged to the desktop, this MP3 file, that we can now email to other people. MP3s are generally pretty small files. I can get the info on this particular file and see that it's only a 4.4 megabyte file. And a lot of email programs might reject file attachments that are larger than 10 megabytes. So that's something to be concerned with if you're going to be emailing a file that's going to be larger than that. But since it's so small, we should have no problem uh, emailing this particular file. I'm going to do that using the uh, mail program right on the Mac. But pretty much any mail client would work just as easily as long as they handle attachments in a similar way. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up my mail and then create a new message. 
and I can call it, I can, you know, send it to whoever I'm going to send it to, and whatever subject line I want to give it. Uh, but then I can also make whatever note that I want to make, and excuse my very odd language there, I'm simply just hitting some things to fill in the, the space. What I'm really concerned with is what it's going to do with, uh, with this attachment. And what I do is, once I've created the note, I can take this file and drag it right into the message. And mail is going to drop it right into the message that they'll see as an attached MP3 file on the recipient's end that can be uh, played or downloaded on their end and just simply send it. So there you go. That's the very simple process of using iTunes to convert your audio file from a CD track to an MP3 and then how to uh, email it as an attachment in your email. Good luck, enjoy, and thanks for watching.